Well, those last two videos I did on installing and setting up Godot were pretty boring. Let's get into some fun stuff. We're going to make a clock app, just like this. Tells you a date and time, runs on your phone, tablet, desktop, all that good stuff. Let's dive right in. Shouldn't take very long. The code is very short. Let's get started. As always, you can get the source code and the assets in this whole project uh, up on GitLab. GitLab.com forward slash melex1000 forward slash clock dash app. Check out a link in the description for that. Let's go ahead and get started. We have a new project here. And uh, this new project is going to start off with a user interface, which is a control node. So we're going to click that. I'm going to change this and just call it main, this is main window. We can also call it clock. Let's call it clock. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and we're going to add in a vertical box. So what does a vertical box do? It allows you to line things vertically. So we're just going to type in vbox here and add that container. And then within that, we're going to add in another child, which is going to be a label. This label is going to be our time label. We're going to say 10 p.m. just to have something in there. Now, it's really small and not the greatest uh, font in the world. Let's go ahead. I'm going to pull uh, some assets real quick from my GitLab page. You can create your own or find your own. Uh, but in there, I have a fonts folder, which I'll pull over here, which just has a font in it. And then we also have an images. So I'm gonna pull that over as well. And um, put that, don't want that in the fonts, we want it. There we go. Uh, in there, there's a folder called backgrounds and there's three, but really only we're using two. One of them, we can actually delete this sky gray dot JPEG. Um, and that should be it for that. So that will be our background and our load screen when it comes time. But let's go ahead and start working on this. Now that we have our font loaded, we can choose our label. We can go over here and scroll down to custom fonts, empty, choose dynamic font. Click on where you just created the dynamic font, go down to font and say load. We're gonna go into our fonts folder and choose that font. Or of course, pick whatever font you want. Uh, and then what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to add an outline usually makes it easier to read if there's a background since we have uh, white text. If there's any white in the background, which I'm going to throw a cloud background, it might be a little bit easier to read if there's a black border. Black border looks kind of thick here, but we're going to increase the size of this. Um, but real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that label and I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it. And that one will be our time or our date. So we're going to click here and we're going to rename this date. We'll rename this one time. And we're also, just to be sure, I'm going to click on the date and say uh, make uh, sub-resources unique. That way I can change them independently. I'm going to now choose my time and I'm going to up this to 120 in size. And then I'm going to choose my date and I'm going to change that. So we're going to go to custom fonts, uh, not color, not font colors, but custom fonts. Click where it says dynamic and change its size to, uh, I think 64 would probably be pretty good. And we're going to put in a date format. I'm going to just use uh, numeric. So I'm going to say uh, 3, uh, 10, 2021. How about that? I'm going to now choose our vertical container and I'm going to say layout full rectangle. And then for time, I'm going to choose that. I am going to tell it that I want it to center. Uh, to center up, align center, and then we're going to also align it at the bottom, and we're going to go to its size flag and say expand and expand. There we go. I think that's all we need to do for that one. We're going to choose date. We're going to tell it to align center, and we're going to say we want to vertical align at the top, and we're also going to tell it to at least vertically expand Oh, and fill. Did I say bottom? I meant to say top here. And for time, we also want it under, do, 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 where are we? We want it to fill vertically as well. So now they're lined up. They're both centered and the date will always be below the time. That's it for our setup besides adding a background later on, but let's go ahead and write our script. I'm going to click here. I'm going to say, attach a script. I'll just call it clock.gd. It's Godot script. I'm going to erase all of this and I'm just going to copy and paste the code I've already written, but then explain it to you. So control extends control because this is a control node. You'll always have that on a control node. And then we're going to say on ready. So we're going to wait till it loads because we're going to grab the time and date label. Okay. So we need to wait for it to load. So that's why it says on ready. We're going to take our date label and we're going to say, well, we're going to call that date. 
and the time on call time. That way we can just call them easily by using those names, for example, here and here. Um, so we do that. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to leave this ready function. That's something that will run the first time it loads up. There's nothing I need it for, for it to do, but you might want to add something in there. I'll just leave that there for now and just add a pass so that it just goes past it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to say use an OS command and get the date and time. So this should be uh, universal from operating system to operating system. I mean, we could use shell commands to get a properly formatted date and time. Like, for example, on a Linux or some sort of Unix uh, system, we should use it. type in date, and it should give us the date, and we could use that. But uh, then if you went to another machine that doesn't have that date command or the date command works different, it wouldn't be compatible. So we're just going to get uh, the current date and time using this built-in function here from the OS. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the time label text and the date label text to the outputs of these functions. So we're going to grab the date time. We're going to pass it to both those functions. Let's look at the get time function. So we're passing it the time. So now we're going to say we want to know whether it's 8 a.m. or 8 a.m. Whether it's a.m. or p.m. Uh, by default, it's going to give us a 24-hour uh, hour. And so there might be a built-in function. I didn't see it in the documentation to get a 12-hour output for the hours. I didn't see it, so I just created my own here. Basically, I'm saying here, from that time that we passed it, our current time, get the hours, put it in a variable called hours. And then I'm going to say, okay, if it's greater than 12, change the meridian to p.m. Because it's already set to a.m. So if it's more than 12, it's already set to p.m. And then we're going to say, also, if it's more than 12, subtract 12. And that should get us our time our hour anyway. Next, we're going to get the minutes. So we're saying, okay, create a variable called minutes. It's from the current time and it's minutes, but we want it to always be two characters. See if it's anywhere from, you know, let's say it's one o'clock, one o'clock to 110, anywhere from there, one o'clock to 109. It's not going to be 109. It's just going to say nine. So we want to make sure that our minutes are always two digits in length. So this is what that's doing. It's saying, make sure it's always two digits. And if it's a one digit number, for example, five, put a zero before it. That's it. Then we just get our format. So we're going to return this time. We're going to convert all these integers we just got, uh, the hours and minutes, and we're going to convert them to strings. That's what this str does. We're going to put a colon in the middle, and then we're going to add our am, pm. And then we're going to return that. So that's basically saying, OK, this function is then returning whatever wherever we called it, which was up here. We're putting that output into that label. We're going to do the same thing for the date text. So here's the date text. We're going to run our function uh, get date. We're going to pass it that current time. And uh, whatever the output of this function is, we'll go into that label. So we're saying here, take that date, get the month, day, and year. And then, of course, it depends on what country you're in. Uh, here in the US, we're going to go month. And now we're getting um, integers here, numbers here. So we're going to be converting them to strings, basically just characters uh, rather than numeric values. So we're going to get the month, put a forward slash, get the day, put a forward slash, and get the year. And then we're going to return that. And it goes into that label. And that is it. This process is running over and over and over again. Um, and uh, so it's just constantly checking the date and time. And uh, so now we can hit Control S to save our project. Yeah, I'll, I'll save this scene as clock. And then we'll hit F5. And the first time we'll ask you, what do you want your default scene to be? We'll choose that clock. And there we go, we have our clock. And you can see, oh, just as I opened up this application, I switched over to the next minute. So there's the time and date. Go ahead and close that. And of course, that's nice, but let's go ahead and add a background. To add a background to this, uh, there's a few different ways to do it, but we're going to add a child node, and it's going to be a texture rectangle. So texture rectangle. And then here where it has its texture, we're going to put this sky one or whatever image you want. This is, is a tiling image I made, so it should tile seamlessly, theoretically. So I'm going to set this to tile, but we also want it to expand. And uh, I'm just going to be cheap about this. Whoop. And go like that. It's not it's, it's not tiling properly. Oh, you know what? I, I created it, but I created it wrong. If this was a seamless tiling um, image, you wouldn't see that seam there, unfortunately. It is, you know what? Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So I'm going to open up GIMP. And then I'm going to take this image that I've already created, which I tried tiling. I don't know uh, at what point I messed it up, um, but I'll drag that image over to here, here, boom. 
And uh, it was originally just a picture I took with my phone of the sky and then set to be seamless, but somewhere I did something wrong. So we're going to come in here and we're just going to go down to map tile seamless. And basically this doesn't work with all types. Like you're not going to get a brick wall that tiles seamlessly, but this should look a little funky, but it should tile seamlessly. Now I will control E to export that and just override that file. And once I export it, I should be able to go back into Godot. And there we go there. We don't have that seam anymore. You can definitely see the repeating pattern, but that seam is gone. Uh, obviously it could be done a lot better, but uh, we really shouldn't see uh, the tiling too much. Um, and I just kind of, I'm doing this kind of cheap. I kind of drug this out. There's different ways you can get for this to cover the entire screen. I don't want any uh, black uh, letterboxing going on on my application. So I, I drug this out. I also want to drag it up here so that it's behind our time and date. And if I hit F5 now, you can see that image. And it shouldn't matter whether it's portrait or landscape. We should see what we see. Um, other things you might want to look at if you go into projects here, we're going to change the boot splash screen. That's one thing. Uh, so instead of showing, if I exit out of this and I hit F5, you'll see it says Godot game engine. You don't necessarily want that to show up on your application unless you're promoting Godot, which isn't a bad idea. Uh, but you probably want to do your own. So I'm just going to put this gray copy of the sky image. Now if I start my application, it shows while it's loading, it will show that gray sky image. And there's a few options in there for that. You'll see full size, use filter or background color. You saw when it started up, there were gray sides to it. You can change the look of that. But the other things you might want to play with, and this is just, I'm going to show you where this is, but I'm going to leave it up to you on, on how you set it up for your application. But we come down here to display window and we scroll down. Uh, right now, by default, Godot is going to say landscape, but you may want this to force portrait. Or in most cases with the phone, you're going to want to say, or at least with this application, sensors. That way, if you rotate the phone, your application will rotate as well. Another thing you can do is you can say uh, stretching. You can say 2D viewport. So I can say, uh, let's go viewport and not ignore aspect, but let's just say keep aspect. Uh, and this will help keep sizing. It's Again, you got to play around with it. So here I have those black borders I don't want. Uh, so, but it keeps everything the right size. If I went back into here and I was to change that to ignore, now if I run the application, you can see it squished everything, uh, which most likely you do not want that option. But you want to play around, and again, based on your application, I'm going to say keep, and I'm just going to say disable stretch. Uh, and our words will always be in the same screen, but as the uh, resolution of the screen gets larger, um, it will, the words might look a little bit smaller. So if you have an extremely high resolution screen, in this particular case, the, the fonts might get, uh, be smaller on the screen. Uh, but since I pulled this out, we should not get any gray outline. We should just see that image. Let's go ahead and look at that again. There we go. That is the result I want. Let me go ahead and plug my phone in through USB here. And before I push it to the phone, I want to go in and set up an Android export. Again, when we go to export, we can choose all these different formats. And if you followed my tutorial, we also did the setup for Android devices. I can choose that. And really the only thing I need to do in here is I probably want to change this unique name to fit my company or project. My website is Films by Chris, so I'm doing com.filmsbychris. You don't have to name it that, uh, but that seems to be a fairly standard way of doing this. And as I always say, it's kind of weird that it's like that, but that's what it is. And then here it says gen name. That's just so the application on the phone is going to, it's that package is going to be com.filmsbychris, and in this case, clock app or whatever I named the application. It's going to use that name. I could manually type in a name there, but it's using a variable in case I change the name of uh, the app. The only other thing is if you don't have global uh, debug keys, you can put your debug key in here or release key if you're generating a release. If you do pull my uh, code off GitLab, I did put in a debug key there so you don't have to generate one yourself, um, but feel free to. It's just a debug key. When you actually release, you want to generate your own. I have a global one set up on my system that I showed in a previous video. So now I should be able to click this Android icon. It should package up as an APK and push it over to the phone. And, uh, and and tries to open it. Sometimes 
it doesn't open properly, but then I can just click on the icon, which, oh, one other thing I should do, right now it's going to have the Godot icon, which I don't necessarily want. So let me pull over my project from online again, and just from there, you can grab any icon you want. Uh, let's see, clock app, I'm gonna go source, and I have this icon that I found online, and I'm gonna pull that over to resources, and it put it in the wrong folder. Let me just go ahead and drag that up to here, and I would think that if I, yep, override the Godot icon. Now, it, I'm not gonna repackage re it, but uh, now when I package it, it should show that clock icon instead of the Godot icon. Here we go, unplugged from USB. It's now installed on my phone. There we go, I guess my battery is low. So there we go, may not be the best icon uh, background. It makes it a little difficult to read, but it's just an example, and you can see we set it up so it should rotate whatever way we have our phone. And that's it. A very basic clock application. You know, it uh, doesn't do anything but show you the, the date and time that's on your phone. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Just looking at using Godot for more than just games. It can be very useful for creating basic little applications. And yes, every phone already has a clock application. There's many out there to choose from. Why create one more? Because you can. And you can make it how you like it and you know exactly how it works. So you can change whatever aspects you want. And you know it's not, you know, tracking you or anything like that if you're paranoid about that sort of thing. Which, if you are, good for you. Thanks for watching. Films by Chris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. Also, a link to my Patreon page. If you like these videos, check that out. I would love your support. If you can't support me financially, think about liking, sharing, subscribing. And I hope that you have a great day. Again, check out the links in the description for the project code. Have a great day.